everyone, Pam Gregory, astrologer. I just want to do a separate video on um, the what has been called the Pluto return in the US. But it isn't just going to affect the US, it's going to affect the world. And it's really too long to include in a regular update, which is why I'm doing this separately. So what I'm going to do is share my screen and hope you can see all that. Now, I know this will be hieroglyphics to many of you, but to the, um, the more educated astrologically, um, this will, I hope, be helpful. Now, this is the chart for the US that was set at um, 4th of July, 1776, Philadelphia, and um, 10 past five in the afternoon. This is, this is about the Declaration of Independence. And this is really the, the, the birth chart, if you like, for the current US. And what's very interesting as background to this, and many of you will be familiar with this through the history, is the colonists really wanted to break away from the onerous taxes in coming from the UK. And also they felt they had no representation in the government of the UK. So it was a combination of factors of oppressive taxes and controlling government that they felt they had no say in. No representation it was a, a phrase about no representation, no taxation. And so hence the breakaway and, and really hence this declaration of independence, which set out three main truths that all men are created equal, all men have their rights given by God, and um, those are of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. So it's a real statement of freedom and equality at that time. And I think all of those themes are very, very interesting as background to what we're going into, because Pluto, symbolism of Pluto is very linked to debt, default, um, deficits, that kind of thing, taxes, very much so. So, and also in this chart for the US, um, Pluto falls in this second house. This second house here is the country's economy. This is what I'm going to be focused on here, Pluto at 27 of Capricorn. So this is linked to the country's economy, finances, but also the country's values, okay? So I think this, this is a very, very widely used chart by astrologers and many events over the years, I've used it for many, many years, have really nailed its accuracy. For instance, at 9-11, whatever you think about 9-11, transiting Pluto was at 12 degrees of Sagittarius, right on this most important point of the US identity. That's the most important point in anybody's birth chart. So this is about the identity of the US. Pluto is to do with trauma, survival issues. Sagittarius is to do with flight. So transiting Pluto was exactly 12 degrees on that ascendant. Saturn was opposing it at 14 degrees of Gemini. Saturn is buildings, Gemini is the twins. Isn't this so literal? So it was a Pluto-Saturn opposition. And as you will know from um, all I said in 2020, hard aspects between Saturn and Pluto, squares are hard aspects, conjunctions, oppositions. It tends to bring about hard times or more control, more rules and regulations. And this was the case here. We all know that from that time, Transiting Pluto tends to bring about permanent changes from that time. We all have to carry our liquids and gels in tiny plastic bags that we have to check in um, as we check in for our flight. So that those were permanent changes as, the re as the, a result of 9-11. And that was very clearly, tightly across this incredibly important axis for the US. So there are many other things that have kind of really nailed this as, as the chart um, to use. And in this chart, as I say, Pluto here at 27 of Capricorn is in the second house of the country's economy, finances and money and values. So transiting Pluto up in the heavens has a 246 year orbit. So it's coming down the track right now towards what I will now call natal Pluto for the US. Transiting Pluto is at 24 degrees of Capricorn. It's, we're already feeling this energy coming down the track. It will become exact on this Pluto on the 20th of February 
2022, so 20th of the second 22. I'm not a numerologist, but I think that's something to do with master numbers that numerologists can have a field day with and um, explain what that means in, in their uh, language. But certainly this is an incredibly powerful time of death, transformation and rebirth, because that's what the symbolism of Pluto is about. Transiting Pluto, moving through Capricorn, as I've said many times, is about unearthing, revealing, excavating any corruption that exists in top-down structures. So Capricorn is very linked to, to banking and big, big business and um, finance, investment companies. It's linked to governments, big corporations, that kind of thing. And it, Pluto, the transit of Pluto, will unearth those. So it is now coming back to its natal place uh, for the US chart. And that's, as I say, will be exact in February, but we're already into this energy. And Pluto isn't about a repair job. Pluto is about um, death, transformation and rebirth, as I say. So it's linked to the myth of Persephone. If you know the myth of Persephone, she was kidnapped and taken down to Hades, pale, and she had to cross the sticks all alone, S-T-Y-X, all alone. It was dark and scary. And then she came back up to the light. She was kind of reborn, as it were, stronger, wiser. So this is the, protest, uh, the process of, of Pluto. And it, I always use the analogy of when a tree dies in a wood and it falls and it has to rot down completely before it can form new fertile soil um, for new life to be formed. So this is what we're into for the US economy. And of course, the US economy is totally linked to the global economy because that's how um, it's all interconnected. So it, Pluto takes things down to the bare bones and then rebuilds, but in a different form, in a better form. Um, and it's permanent, the change is permanent. Now, um, this Pluto at 27 of Capricorn is going to be very triggered by the full moon in Aries at 27 degrees, 26 minutes of Aries on the 20th of October. I'm going to do a separate update on that. But essentially, that is six minutes away. The sun and moon are going to be um, six minutes away. The sun is going to be... Um, so the sun is going to be over here in Libra. The moon is going to be over here, 27 of, of Aries. Um, the sun is also conjunct Mars at 23 of um, Libra. And the moon is conjunct Eris at 24 of Aries. I mean, boy. And they are not only square to transiting Pluto, but also this US natal Pluto. I mean, you know, I, I just lose words for this. This is going to be massive because it's cardinal energy. Aries, Cancer, Libra, Capricorn are cardinal signs where we expect to see some dynamic action. And this is warrior energy that's emerging. Aries, warrior energy, ruled by Mars at the full moon on the 20th of October. So I'll be talking more about that in, in the update. But nevertheless, Sun, Moon, Mars, Eris are going to be in hard aspect to this natal Pluto in the second house of the US economy. Very interesting indeed. Also remember what I said in a recent update that the dwarf planet Ixion is going to be moving back into Capricorn from Sagittarius over the world axis at the end of October, late October. It, last time it moved um, into the beginning of Capricorn, was in March, April 2020, beginning of the pandemic. And that's, of course, when we had some, some major stock market drops as well. So we may expect to see something similar this time around. Um, and it will be on the world axis, so it will be very public. But I really want to emphasize in this process, what I'm expecting to see is not just um, a transformation of the economy, which won't just happen in October. That's just the beginning of it um, through a, a really very strong six month process. But I'm also expecting to see themes emerging around taxes, around debt, around default as a consequence, economic consequences of the pandemic. I've heard rumors that there could be increased taxes, which looks fairly inevitable, and perhaps even increased control of the IRS to get higher taxes, et cetera, et cetera. But remember the colonists, 
remember what they did. We're going to have an echo of what the colonists did. And I expect to see, I'm going really goosebumpy now, I expect to see an echo of the Declaration of Independence in some form. I don't know what form exactly. I don't know how that's going to happen exactly, but it's going to be the power of the people because it was for the colonists. Remember, we've got Jupiter and Saturn in Aquarius right now, power of the people. So it's going to be grassroots up and it's going to be linked to themes of um, throwing off oppressive taxes, financial systems, economic systems and government. That's, that's how it's going to work. So very, very interesting. And this is such a concentrated six month period we're, we're going to into, uh, going into. It's like a, a vortex at that 3D level. So just know that's going to happen. Remember what I always say, we have to demolish the old house before we can uh, rebuild the new. And remember also Capricorn is about constitutional matters. It's government, not just economic matters and taxes. So what is also interesting, if we look down the timeline, is we have a total solar eclipse on the 4th of December at 12 degrees, 22 minutes of Sagittarius. One minute, not one degree, one minute from exactitude on that US ascendant. Wow. And we feel eclipses, solar eclipses up to a month before and up to six months later. So it won't just be on the 4th of December, it's a whole process. Now, eclipses always are, they tend to be like, a bit like Uranus transits. They're often sudden and unexpected and something comes out of the blue. And they're often, often something is eclipsed, for sure. Often something is eclipsed, but because it's a solar eclipse, it's like a big new moon, something is also born at this time. So not only is this a spiritual transformation for the US in terms of their values and their economy, it's also a rebirth of their identity. And for the more advanced of you, solar arc Pluto is tightly on this midheaven. It's at, solar arc Pluto is currently at one degree, 10 minutes of, of Libra. So it's still very tightly on that midheaven. So that's about a fundamental change in the government. Now, I don't know what form this is gonna take. It's down to collective consciousness, but isn't that interesting? So, um, we also have, which is, it's reinforcing all these themes. We have Venus, which in December is going to be trucking through Capricorn. And on the 19th of Capricorn, it's actually at 20, sorry, on the 19th of December, it's actually at 26 degrees of Capricorn. Now, Venus is also connected with wealth and money and banking and currencies and bank payment systems, that kind of thing, especially when it's in Capricorn. It's also connected to relationships. So on the 19th of the month, Venus actually moves retrograde at 26th of Capricorn. So when Venus moves retrograde, we can often be rethinking our relationships at that time if they're not satisfactory. But this is very much about, I think, about a rethink of, of, of the economic system. So Venus then comes to back to exactly conjunct Pluto, can you believe, on Christmas Day, gets to exactly conjunct, um, sorry, transiting Pluto, transiting Pluto at 25 degrees, 43 minutes of Capricorn. So both Venus and transiting Venus, transiting Pluto are two degrees away from this US natal Pluto on Christmas Day. And don't forget also on Christmas Eve, we have the final third exact square between Saturn and Uranus and hard aspects between Saturn and Uranus historically are very linked to economic volatility. For instance, they were in hard aspect, they were opposite each other in 2008. So we're getting some very, very clear messages here. So Venus, because of its retrograde, is actually going to be conjunct Pluto, conjunct um, this US Pluto really from the 11th of December all the way through to the 2nd of January. It's a long period. Normally Venus only is conjunct any planet um, for about a day because it then moves on quickly. But because of the retrograde, it's gonna be hovering around 
this area. And remember, transiting Pluto comes back to natal Pluto in February, 20th of uh, Feb 22, but it, it stays there, hovers about that through 22 and 23. So, you know, we have a process to go through here. Transiting Venus stays in Capricorn all of January, all of February. So, and then it comes back to um, conjunct Pluto at 27 degrees. Can you believe spot on that US Pluto on the 3rd of March together with Mars, Venus, Mars, transiting, transiting Venus, transiting Mars, transiting Pluto, all at 27 degrees of Capricorn. I mean, bullseye. So to me, that has a very strong theme of a new economic system being born, that we are going to go through some economic turbulence and, and collapse um, and for purpose. Remember, this is all for purpose. Um, and there's going to be some kind of rebirth or reemergence energized by Mars in very early March. And then it's obviously going to take, you know, these things don't happen overnight. It's going to take some time to, to stabilize. Um, but that is just so clear to me and so interesting as well. And don't forget that we have a, um, on the 19th of November, we actually have a lunar eclipse in Taurus Scorpio. The nodes are moving into Taurus Scorpio, North Node Taurus, South Node Scorpio. In January uh, 22, they will stay there for um, 18 months. They are also, that Scor Taurus Scorpio axis is very linked to money, currencies, wealth, other people's money, taxes, that whole thing. So very clear that we are, I believe, strongly rebirthing an economy. And what is beautiful here, I mean, apart from the fact that the frequency for humanity seems to be going just through the roof right now. Um, remember, and I don't always talk about it, but Homeir is at 27 degrees of Libra. So she's in this long-term T-square, squaring Pluto, and also opposing Eris, who isn't shown here, but 24 of Aries. So Homer is the link to the Hawaiian goddess of fertility, as you know, she was, she's a very regenerative, creative energy. She's able to birth babies from all over her body. She has a deep instinctive connection to nature. She can produce food with abundance everywhere. She's a, she's a dwarf plant. She's a Kuiper belt energy. She's quantum. She's incredibly positive. She's one of the strongest symbols we have for new earth and the rebirth of our connection to nature, abundance, um, just an instinctive love of, of the earth and nature. But also, interestingly, Libra is ruled by Venus. So here we go again around that, that cycle. But she is the very strong element of the surge of regenerative energy and rebirth for all the things I've been talking about. So, um, and she, of course, is involved in that full moon um, on the 20th of October because she's at 27 of um, 27 of Libra. So she's piling in with the sun, moon, Mars and Pluto. It's going to be huge, but I will do a separate video on that. So I hope that's helped. I hope it's been clear. I'm sorry I'm talking technical sometimes, but I, I felt it was it was actually more helpful to, to show the chart and, and walk you through it. So, um, oh, and by the way, we currently have transiting Saturn exactly on the south node. Big reality check right now. Not shown here, but Saturn is at seven of um, Aquarius. Interesting. So hope that's helped you. And um, bye for now. And I'll be putting out an update in a few days time. Thanks so much for listening. Bye for now.